Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Tyler here. And in today's lesson, we're going to be focusing on functions and how to create your own custom callback functions in JavaScript. So let's get started. Here we have a simple header and button set up with pre-applied elements. Just to demonstrate um, to people who don't know what I'm talking about by callback functions, but a callback function is a function and this is a pre-made one, add event listener, which takes in a parameter. For here, it's a string of click, and then it allows you to pass in your own function, which gets fired off at the end of this function call. So this is really useful, uh, for example, to handling events. And here, I just wrote out a quick, you know, um, increment. So you click this button, it's gonna run this function right here. And we're going to create a similar type of thing. We're going to create our own custom callback. So to do that, let's get started. Now, to understand what this is doing is this is basically a function. Think of it as add event listener. And it's taking in two parameters. It's taking in a string and a function. So let's create a function that adds two numbers and allows the user to interact with those numbers when they're done. So let's just say function. And we'll take in X and Y. And these will be the two numbers we want to add. And then we'll just put this callback here. So this means the user will be able to write a callback once we do what we need to do. Now let's just add X plus Y. And we'll put that into a variable called result. Boom, just like that. So here, um, you could return the value, but say this is again a way more complicated function than just adding two numbers. And we actually want to give maybe more variables back or just allow the user to interact with our function. What we can do is call this callback. And here we can pass in variables. We don't have to, but we can pass in variables or not. So I'm going to pass in result. And now I will show you what will happen. If we run this, nothing's going to happen because we still haven't instantiated our function. So let's do that. Let's call add here. And again, it takes in two numbers. So we'll do 10 plus 10 and a function. So similarly, what we were able to do up top here, we are now creating our own callback. And in here, we also have access to this result variable which we specified would be allowed to pass in we could pass in more things like results and true for example so let's just say results and arg2 we'll say arg1 and arg2 and here we can console.log arg1 and when you do that you will see that we get 20 which again comes from our function and arg2 will give us true. Now, this may not seem very practical, but a lot of the time, um, instead of passing in something like this, it may be like an error message and some data. Say you're making a request and you want to have your users have two variables to interact with, for example, data and error. And let's just say we return, instead of results, we'll just say data is like this is some data and we'll just say like an ID of some random stuff we'll just act like this is some data from like a database for example and instead we're calling a function get data and we take in like an ID you know or something like that we're not going to actually use it in here, but actually, we'll just do that. There we go. And say we're actually making a request to a database instead of making up something. Well, here what we can do is we can say results and put results here. Usually you put error and then data, and then we can just put null for error. So here we're basically creating our fake database query. So let's just say get data, and we'll just pass in an ID of some random random stuff and we'll say um, error and data and we can say if error console.log the error and 
And as you can see, we have now created our custom callback, which we can pass multiple parameters. And now you can kind of see how this might be more useful. Some functions might give an error. And again, we don't have to say null, and it's not going to give us an error here. It's going to say this is some data and give us an ID. Now again, this is useful because say we do return an error and we say um, error, error getting data. And here you will see error getting data. And what you can do then is maybe not pass any data. And again, you'll get an error there, but you can see that Sorry, <laughs> you're getting data. And you can see that right now, we just created our own callback function, which looks very similar to these and is customizable to whatever you need for your application. Now, there's one last thing I'll show you, and that's that we don't have to actually make a messy looking callback function like this. We could just put in like handle data, just like this. And let me create that function real quick. And here, what I'm doing is I'm creating my own function called handle data, and it has error data, and I'm just passing that in through here. So again, we can console.log error. If there's an error, let me just. data. And here we have done the exact same thing as before, but now we are creating our own function and passing it off later to deal with right here. So yeah, hope you found this helpful. Basically we learned that we can work with functions to create our own custom callbacks and you can take in as many parameters or as little parameters as you need and you can pass in or pass out and return other functions with this. Imagine, again, this is a very basic example with a fake database query, but similar things like NEDB and Mongoose would interact with the database this way. You would, you know, um, find, like find one in the database taking some sort of parameter, and then it would do its thing, kind of like this, and it would give you back the data or an error. And this is another way um, to build better dynamic um, functions. So hope you enjoyed. Uh, my name is Tyler and I'll see you next time. Bye.